Welcome to Everything on Everything. Today we are looking at the devastating truths and suffering of young women in deep-rooted Arab and Muslim cultures, namely the honor killings also known as shame killings. But before we continue, be sure to click on the subscribe button to support this channel. Firstly, we begin with understanding or somewhat defining the whole term honor killings. So basically, honor killings or shame killings is the murder of a family member due to beliefs that the victim or family member has brought shame or dishonor to the family by simply violating or disregarding the principles of the community or their religion, to be exact. Yeah, I know, quite deep. Honor killings though are gender specific, which unfortunately happens more often to women. These women are murdered by male family members. It is important to know that most Arab and Muslim families have their whole lives revolving around reputation. This so-called reputation goes beyond our understanding. It is a deep-rooted subconscious mentality that is infused in these cultures which is unfortunate for these women and sometimes men that are involved. The reasons for these killings of these women vary, ranging from instances where a woman is caught simply having a conversation, an open conversation with a man that is not her relative or her in-law, or a woman asking for a divorce from her abusive husband, and one that is utterly, utterly disturbing and outrageous if you ask me, is that even if these women are victims of rape or sexual assault, they can still be murdered or not offered any help as if it was all their fault. The mentality behind all these killings is based on a mere suspicion that a woman has allegedly, yes, allegedly, acted in a way that could damage her name, not her name per se, but her family's name. This may possibly trigger an attack from other relatives, be it her brother, her father, or her uncle. Regardless of the validity of the suspicion, it unfortunately leaves a target on the victim's back. Surprisingly though, one would think that since this often happens to women, that there would be more women empowerment, but because of fear and manipulated mentalities, female relatives usually defend these killings and at times help the males set up these killings for them. Let's go back in time and understand the history behind honor killings. Honor killings have been known since ancient biblical times. Well, in those times, if a woman was caught committing any sort of adulterous act, her and her partner would be stoned to death. No questions asked. This was certainly seen as a crime and it was a norm to all society, though a little unusual but still acceptable. However, today, this practice is most common in regions like North Africa and the Middle East. Honor killings is a complicated issue that runs deep in the Arab society. The Canadian Justice Department article reads that, historically, in some Arab countries under the rule of Ottoman, every time someone kills, he would sprinkle the victim's blood on his clothes and parade through the streets displaying his bull murder weapon to basically increase his honor. This only attracted respect from the community rather than the condemnation for taking someone's life. So with that being said, the perceived way of obtaining honor and respect then turned into a societal mentality that taking a life for honor is better than anything. In addition to that, we see that the mere perception that a woman has defied the code of sexual behavior damages honor. This rule of honor is unforgiving as mentioned before. Even an ounce of suspicion towards a woman is taxing and these women are not even given the slightest chance to defend themselves. Family members have no socially acceptable alternative or choice rather to remove the stain on their honor by attacking the woman. So technically you can literally lie to a woman's family and she is gone. Talk about citizen power. Well, in this case, manpower. This, however, can only explain the cultural mindsets that are subconsciously implemented from birth, I guess. The honor killings date back to pre-Islamic times when Arab settlers took over the region adjacent to Sindh, which is also known as Baluchistan in Pakistan, where, bear in mind, these honor killings often took place. These Arab settlers had patriarchal traditions that were, quite frankly, outrageous. Such traditions date back to the earliest historic times of ancient Babylon where the main controversial view was that a woman's virginity belonged to her family and not her. 
Though these killings are not written in Quran, honor killings in Islamic definitions is defined as extra legal punishment by the family against the woman and is actually forbidden in Islamic law. Religious authorities, however, forbid this type of practice, so it's technically a cultural issue and not a religious issue at all. And because the Islam has such a big influence on the majority of Muslims in many countries, this gives some members the push to justify honor killings, even though there is no support for killings in Islam. It feels more like a game of hide and seek, but in this case, if you're found, yeah, you get the picture. Honor killings, however, are not necessarily practiced in as many countries as it used to be, but it is more dominant in the Middle East, especially in Pakistan. In a recent case, for example, so you can get a picture of exactly how these honor killings are outrageous, I repeat, a video circulated around a community of three women fully dressed alongside two other men. So these women were being taped. All they did was clap and chant as the men danced. But guess what? A simple innocent video shook the whole community to its core. Do bear in mind that something as simple as openly conversing with a different gender is frowned upon. Frowned upon here is a mere understatement, but you know what I mean. So now you can imagine what happened to the three women and the two men in the video. According to a journalism segment conducted by the Vice Asia, and this was called Honor Killings in Pakistan, the Kohistan case, the three girls were thrown into prison, tortured, and then killed. The other two men in the video were brothers. The younger one was killed and the older one ran into hiding with his family until he was later found and also killed. With all this going on, where is the law? Because I'm pretty sure, you know, this is a violation of human rights, some way, somehow. Where is a sense of humanity? But believe it or not, the right to life of Pakistani women is conditional on their obeying social norms and traditions. Mind blown. However, this law was ratified by the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women in 1996, but women still continue to be commoditized, fought over for land and money, given a swara, which is compensation for murder, or watasata, which is when men get their wives by offering a sister or daughter as an exchange, and still continuing today being abused, raped, and murdered by their close relatives. Unfortunately, though, one would think that there should be something, anything, that Generation Z can do about it because they clearly seem to be taking over the world. But sadly, if you are born and raised in a certain environment for so long, this type of mentality has been passed down because of a subconscious mentality that you don't even realize you have until things actually start to change. The next question that may come to your mind is probably this. Does anything happen to the men or relatives murdering these women? Or do the families forgive these relatives? And the answer to that is no and yes. An article written by Noor Akbar Khalil and Mashud Ahmed Sheikh found that honor killings are possible because these inhumane acts are not condemned by the society and the law does not punish perpetrators as only about 20%, a very worrying 20% of honor killings are ever brought to book. Despite the government declaring that any murders committed in the name of honor would be considered intentional murder, this law is not enough because these killings are mostly done by relatives. It is also important to know the reason why this is so. Well. In places like Pakistan or basically the Middle East, almost 67% of the population reside in rural areas and have several joint family systems. So basically, cousins marry cousins. As a result, before the case even reaches court, these relatives get the upper hand to resolve it. The United Nations estimated that 5,000 women are victims of honor killings each year. The BBC then came out and said that it's in fact 20,000 women that are victims of honor killings each year, but so many of these cases just go unreported. The thing that still bothers me is the fact that there are simply no consequences. I mean, not even a sleep in jail for one night or some kind of get a taste of your own medicine. And UNICEF, to name a few, work on raising awareness on this type of crime against women and create a change for a better future. And though we are grateful for this, this goes without saying that the laws have to be stricter or else these crimes could persist. Every year, almost 250 cases go unreported. And if that's not an awakening, I honestly do not know what is. 
Another possible reason is that honor killings is termed as customs, so they don't see it as murdering or killing, but in their case it's a culture or a tradition and they do such acts in the name of honor. Well, there you have it folks, the short banter truths behind honor killings and something I suppose is not given much thought and awareness. But then again, do not worry, we've got you because this is the place where you learn about everything on everything. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment and switch on the notification bar for more of our videos.